Welcome to Garden Fork Radio, the show about DIY living. We talk about do-it-yourself stuff, how-to, home improvement, cooking, gardening, beekeeping, and some computer geeky stuff as well. Um, It's a solo show today. It's just Eric. I'm testing out a new acoustic little uh, baffle here to see how it sounds, maybe a little less echoey than some of the other little setups I've been playing with. And of course, I just drank some tea with milk, so it's going to make my tongue sound weird. So please bear with me here. It's a Friday afternoon, just the beginning of a heat wave here, but I think we're good. I've lately been really good at cooling down the house at night with the cold air at night, and then in the middle of the day, it seems counterintuitive, but I actually shut all the windows, and I have some fans and ceiling fans stuff to move the air around. If I can, I'll close the blinds or drapes, and it actually will keep the house quite a bit cooler than the outside. Um... It is important to have air moving around inside your house, I found, even if, you know, you don't have the windows open. So I have some of those oscillating fans or ceiling fans. It's worked really quite well. Every once in a while, we do have to turn on the air conditioner. Uh, One of our Labradors, Charlie Pup, does not do well with heat. I think she just has a super high metabolism. She's just the energy Labrador, you know, always quick to play, always want to go do something. So there you go. Uh, A little just thought there on the heat. We have some really fun viewer mail I wanted to talk about today. We just released a video about grilling steak. And the twist here is the steak is literally grilled right on the charcoal without a grill. Uh, You could sometimes call it Eisenhower steak, it's called, and sometimes called commando steak because commando is like, well, that's a reference to how you wear your clothes. But... um, Evidently, Dwight Eisenhower, our former president, when he would have people over to his house, he would cut very thick steaks and he would rub them with olive oil and then lay them right on chunk, wood, hardwood chunk, charcoal, and cook them. And they were delicious. And this is something that's been done by a number of people. There is a restaurant in Dallas that does this that was written up in the New York Times. Matt and Ted Lee wrote an article from the food section of the Times, and that's where I got the idea from. And I thought, wow, let's do this for Garden Fork. It worked out really well. I did practice a couple times because I happen to love a good steak. And a couple of things uh, that I thought about when we were making the video that I perhaps did not say in the show, but thick steaks work much better on this kind of thing than thin steaks do. My big beef, my beef with steak, um, the steaks that you buy in a grocery store that are already pre-cut and shrink-wrapped, I think are usually too thin for almost any kind of cooking except if you freeze them and then bake them or if you uh, do a sous vide and then sear them really quickly or a, a low oven and then sear them very quickly. In a high heat situation, I think they um, go from medium rare to over well done in a matter of seconds. Uh, I actually called the butcher in our local independently owned grocery store and said, hey, it's Eric. Um, Could I get two one and a half inch thick New York strip steaks? And they said, sure. And it worked out really well. What I did was I took those and I did a dry rub recipe that was based on uh, the one in the New York Times article. It was coffee, ground coffee, brown sugar. I did smoked paprika and coarse salt and some cumin. You could also do cinnamon. Well, you can do anything and see what happens. And then I let that sit in the fridge for as long as I could. Uh, It was about four hours in the fridge. Overnight is even better. Because we all know that salt on meat first draws out the liquid, and then the liquid is drawn back in, and it draws back in some of that salt for enhanced flavor. And these things were really quite neat. And I also just love the idea of not having to deal with a grill. I used a cake pan, a 9 by 13 cake pan, to hold in the coals. You've really got to see the video. It's on our site. It's on our YouTube channel. And it will be on iTunes very soon. I had a little hiccup in the iTunes RSS feed, uh, but it will be up there as soon as I can do that one. Oh, a little side note here. Garden Fork Radio is moving to a dedicated server on Libsyn.com. If you know what Libsyn is, they host podcasts, big ones like um, Mark Marin, uh, who just had uh, the president 
on his uh, podcast. It's just become the, for all you geeks out there, the Garden Fork Radio RSS feed, which is an iTunes compliant RSS feed, is overtaxing the uh, server on our share. We have a shared server for the Garden Fork website and we have a really nice, it's a really nice server. It's not a cheap one. It's, it's actually pretty expensive every year. But it's uh, the GPU, GPU, the CPU cycles we get, or GPU cycles, are going over our, um, we're being taxed. Anyway, um, the, the, the RSS feed is being pinged so much now that I've got to move it over to Libsyn. So we're moving the MP3 files over there, and then we're going to do a redirect of the RSS feed. So in the next couple of weeks, if you notice we haven't posted new episodes, you might want to consider um, resubscribing if you don't get it to Garden Fork Radio there. So there you go, little uh, technical info there. If you're thinking about starting a podcast, happy to help you. Uh, there's a lot of resources out there. You know, podcasting is a new cupcake. But um, it was funny, I was going through the episodes and they started episode 101 and uh, I th- what let's let me just look here. Our first episode was on. Um, let's see if I can get the thing to work. We're using a FTP uh, file transfer protocol to FTP all the stuff. Our first episode was on March fourteenth, two thousand and thirteen. So that's pretty good. And we have about two hundred and eighty episodes. So fun. All right, so. In, I was talking about steak, and then I wanted to talk about some viewer mail comments. And here's one that says, I cook steaks like this almost every time I make pizza or bread in my mud oven. When the wood is burned down to coals and the oven is super hot, I spread the coal chunks out on to heat the floor really well. A perfect time to sear some meat. Sometimes I do it right in the coals, but usually I set a metal grill right on top of them to make it easier to turn the meat. The steak is still only about one eighth of an inch off the coals, just not resting directly on them. It's awesome. Try it next time you're prepping your stacked bricks for pizza. Cool. Um, and I've lost this person's name. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Another post I wrote on the site, um, you know, we don't just do videos and the radio show. We also just do written posts on the site. You know, usually about just projects that I'm working on or have worked on. And when I do something, I always take pictures of it. And then sometimes I write about it right away. Sometimes I write about it a year later. And this is one of those where I had a customer in a uh, one-bedroom apartment in New York City. And you know what that's like. So they did not have a dishwasher in their kitchen. Many of them do not. But they thought there might be room for one. Uh, there's also there's a narrow-gauge dishwasher that you can buy. They're almost ex- as expensive, if not more expensive, than a standard size dishwasher. I think it's 18 inch. Uh, I got to look that up. But um, you can f- you can fit these in some pretty small spaces. And there was a cabinet between the stove and the sink that was the same width as one of these dishwashers. And I managed to disassemble the cabinet and reassemble it so you could slide in a dishwasher and it would, and the other cabinets would still look nice. I kind of, it's kind of hard to explain. You have to look at the pictures. Um, it's called custom DIY dishwasher install on the site there. But a couple people wrote in and were like, "Oh yay, someone else that likes small dishwashers." Because it ends up that, you know, a regular size dishwasher to have it run at its most efficient, you have to put a lot of stuff in it. And if it's just uh, two or one people, um, in a house, you're not going to have that many dishes. So Myra wrote in here and says, I'm so happy to see someone else has a smaller dishwasher. We installed ours because there's only the two of us and it isn't a huge kitchen in the cabin. But the biggest thing that attracted us to the smaller size is the amount of water it doesn't use. Well, actually the amount of water, oh, the, the low amount of water it uses compared to a regular size one. It's quieter too. The dishes get clean and I don't have to do them. Very important. Your friend will be most happy, I predict. It looks like it was made uh it looks like it was made to be part of the cabinetry there. Good job. So yeah. Kind of neat there. Worked out really well. And 
I liked it because it was one of those projects that didn't blow up in my face after I said, yes, I do it. Um, you know, working in older apartments and just older houses in general, sometimes as soon as you open up a wall or something, everything starts crumbling in front of your eyes and you're dealing with repairs and modifications done by someone that maybe doesn't have the same uh, standards as you do. <laughs> um, another one of our ep- um, posts that I wrote recently was about a crumble that I tried to make and I completely forgot to put the butter in the in the topping, in the streusel topping. And I was just kind of on autopilot. We had to go to our friend's house for dinner and I was going to crank out this, uh, just like, you know, just a cobbler really quick, <laughs> like, Hey, let's do, let's do this thing. And I can, I just feel like I can do it blind now. And then I, I whizzed it all in the food processor and I didn't really think about it. And I dropped it on and I put it in the oven and I pull it back out a half a layer later. And it's just this dry powder on top of the fruit. And I'm like, what's going on here? And I realized I forgot to put the butter in and I didn't really have time to remake it. And I'm like, you know, these are my friends. They understand how my brain works. So I took melted butter and I drizzled it on top and then I got my propane torch and I kind of caramelized or toasted the top of the thing. And you know, it was what it was. It was pretty good. So Erin wrote in and Erin has uh, from the impatient She's been a guest on the show and she will be back again soon. And she wrote, Oh, I've forgotten all kind of things when I'm baking. The worst was when I forgot the sugar in a pumpkin cheesecake. Oh, it was horrible, and I had no idea I did it until my whole family was digging the dessert after Thanksgiving dinner. Since then, I try really, really hard not to get distracted when I'm baking. It's so easy to forget something, and really, there's nothing you can get away with when leaving out something when it comes to baking. Your propane torch idea was ingenious. Thank you. Good save. So there you go. When in doubt... Add butter and (laughs) bring out your propane torch there. Cool, huh? By the way, our Patreon campaign to support Garden Fork Radio is going really well. Thank you to people that have signed on for that. If you're interested in being a monthly supporter of Garden Fork, I'm asking for $3 a month or more if you like. Uh, There's some perks if you uh, sign up for more than that. And that's about a cup of coffee a month. So I'm asking you to consider buying Garden Fork a cup of coffee a month. It's $36 a year. And you get a GardenFork.tv magnetic decal. I am in the process of redesigning it and ordering new ones for that. It's amazing how many people will make these decals, by the way. If you uh, don't want to do that, but there are there are two other ways you can support us. You can make a one-time contribution to Garden Fork through PayPal. There's a link on the uh, sidebar on all the pages of GardenFork.tv, and there'll be a link in our show notes here. Or you can go shopping on Amazon. If you use the link on our Garden Fork site or this iTunes podcast, and then start shopping at Amazon we get a little finder's fee. It's not a huge amount of money, but it does add up over time. And if enough people do it, that's a substantial piece of income to help us pay for something like our new Libsyn server, which is going to have incur a monthly fee. So if you can, I'd like you to consider that. If not, you're still more than welcome to listen and give us feedback. Always like to hear from everybody. It's radio at gardenfork.tv. Again, radio at gardenfork.tv is the best way to get a hold of us. You can also leave comments on the site. If you got a show idea, I'd love to hear from you or an idea for someone to be a guest on the show. That would be cool. So go out and do cool stuff and come back and tell me about it. Always love to hear it, right? Make it a great day. I'll see you later.